it harder to for a basketball player to become a football player or a football player to become a basketball player? Juice or no juice? Uh -huh. The dude got headbands around his bicep. Destroying. Fractured his neck on this bicep. I've seen it. He laid the hit, but his neck got split. This could have been paralyzing. Oh, but you don't need this. If anything, the UFL needs destroy. Jokic is probably the worst MVP winner in the last 40 years. They're two different type of players. I'm tripping. Yeah, you yeah. are. Yeah, That's I'm why you're sitting you. down. <laughs> Before we move on, you think one should be retired in Carolina? To this day, ain't nobody ever even thought about wearing number two at Auburn. <laughs> Dear Cameron Newton, I do believe I can beat you. Ah. There was not a hundred million people watching you lose a Super okay, Bowl. Okay, pause it right on there. You started. I'm about to finish. I loved when Skip and Stephen A was there. I love to see Skip and Shannon. Skip needs book. He don't want to play you. He trying to play you. If you ever do a celebrity boxing match. I caution what I'm about to say to be the truth okay. and only the truth. People the want storyline. Story you need a villain. They crucify Angel. Rivalries equate to rating. Do you think this the women's basketball is a moment or it's a movement? <laughs> and please don't edit this shit out. Welcome to Fourth to One, where I always got it done. Bringing facts by the tongue before the rising of the sun. This ain't me in the shotgun. Hey, he, 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 he shoots, he scratches. This me and French of TV having a whole lot of fun. You did. Hey, before we get started, man, I must admonish you to do me a solid. As I'm trying to give you good content for the masses, and I promise you to keep it a buck. Make sure you share, make sure you comment, make sure you like, but most of all, Peggy, what we need them to do? Subscribe now. Peggy, we need these people to subscribe. And with that being said, Peggy, how you doing, doggy? What's good, boo? Hell, your lame ass been up to. Man, we've been in different states with different license plates. Mm. Heard you was out there in that desert. Politicking. But the politic, just a little politic, dog. Trying to politic. Yeah, politic with it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? That's all I'm trying to do. You know, being an entrepreneur. Okay. You got to get up and get at it. Okay, you got to do newer shit. You dig what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, you know, yeah. from the beautiful team over here at Iconic Saga, I cannot leave without telling you guys to become a member today. How do you become a member today? Make sure you go to IconicSaga.com where we have giveaways we have exclusive content amongst other things that we do and it's just a dollar mm, for ad free content exclusive content mm. with that being said Pig, what you giving away then boo with that being said Pig, what you giving away i am going to give away my creative creator league mm. jersey game one game one sweat still enough it smell like it boy you dig what i'm saying and you know it's real when the tape's still on it. I had to tape out the, the irrelevant number, and only you would know what that number is. And just so you know that it is authenticated, I have to sign it. Uh, you dig? All for a dollar? All for a dollar! So how do you put your name in a hat to potentially win this Creator League's jersey? Sign up today at IconicSaga.com. Let's start this show off right. Mm -hmm. First down, viral moment of the week. What we got? We got Boog Love the Kids. Oh, that me? Oh, yeah. Easy word. Hey, my boy has some hands, though. So, man, Cam, back as a kid again, man, what it feel like just throwing the ball in the backyard? Well, at the hotel with the, with yeah. the youngins. Well, just the backstory of this, um, we were in Arizona at this uh, resort, um, and we was waiting on our dinner reservations to, to become available. And I seen somebody playing football, or some of the kids playing football. Um, you know the, the most beautiful thing about life and that I enjoy? I love when people don't know me. Mm. And I was just, I like, I remember walking up to y'all, I was like, bro, I want to go just throw football. 
Yeah, you know I know. I'm like, but well, where are you walking to? Where are you going? You, wanna, I, you know, I just see, like, f I remember being places with my brother, and we would just throw and, and imagine and dream and yeah. just be like, oh, Moss, oh, you know, doing all these different things. And for somebody to see what we was trying to do and to help out, you know, be all-time quarterback, let me, you know what I mean? <laughs> And I just saw myself in those kids. And everybody know, like, I really genuinely love kids. Like, I have enough to enjoy and some. But anytime you're able to use your God-given skill to, you know, for the greater good, that's all it was. So that should have been, you know, we don't do wholesome moments, but that was a, that wholesome, was a wholesome moment, moment. For, for, for me, for sure. A lot of people have been picking it up, but that shit, I ain't know nobody was recording me shit. I was just like... I would have got out there and, 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 and cooked they little bit at. <laughs> nah, but yeah, shout out to the kids, man, and, the, and, and whoever covered it. But yeah, that's dope. Man, you came from the gridiron to the hardwood, man. You was mm. in the Creators League. Yeah. Man, we got to catch up with you and get a little uh, mic up. Let's see what we got. What came down to the number, the other number, don't matter. It just, what matters is, you know that I'm the one, not the two. I'm jacking. I'm jacking. Hey! Blood, sweat, and tears. Hack a sack out there. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Hey! Man, what you want from me, man? Get away from me. Hey, listen. <laughs> I played the Super Bowl at like 280, bro. I was, like, I was good with it. was popping. From one boogie to another boogie. You dig what I'm saying? Easy work. Easy work. No, 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 no. No, put him on. Hey, his heel was on the, on the, on the thing. That's good. Cool. That's your job. No. No. There you go. Hey, yes, sir. One pinky, one thumb, all together, one love. <laughs> Look, let me say this. I was reminded why everybody ain't professional. <laughs> why you say that? Because I play, I play basketball now recreationally. Mm -hmm. And to see Paul Pierce, to see Swaggy P, to see DeMarcus Cousins, and I'm saying to myself, oh, shit, I'm not good at basketball. I just play like I just, you know, boom. I probably went like two for ten. But you hold your own, though. Yeah, but I, let, let me say it like this. Not to not to dim his lights, but there's often times when people be like, oh, I could play basketball. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. Yeah. No, you can't. You could, you could play ball, but you can't hoop. Not professionally. Yeah. I'll put it like this, bro. Boogie Cousins respectfully gave me everything and a bag of chips <laughs> with his skill set. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he's 6'11", bro. I'm 6'6". Six, six. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, about, can I stop him? Yes, but how I would stop him, it's not. You're going to try to muscle up. And yeah, get you got you to gotta get, get physical. And I didn't want to. I respect him too much and I respect his career too much. And it's not saying to play dirty. It's yeah. like, yo, I got to contest. I yeah. got to really be one of those guys like, uh, 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 what's my boy from the Pacers that played for the Hornets? Dark skin, the <laughs> said Lance, Lance Stevenson. Stevenson. I would have oh, had the yeah, Lance, Lance Stevenson, Stevenson. bro, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> you did I'm call. here. I was not going to blow in his ear, but yeah. I would just have to just be very, I make, make him very uncomfortable. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's contesting shots, like going up for layups or rebounds or certain things, like just presence alone. Real players don't like that. That's mm -hmm. on offense or defense or football, or basketball. Yeah. Like, people don't want to be irritated. But the football in you is just, man, I'm about to get physical. Like, yeah, I had yeah. to, but yeah. you can't fake physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. You, you can't, can't fake somewhat the, bump. You like, cannot fake the physicality. Yeah. And he's a force that, bro, he's a all-star. Yeah. And I saw firsthand, I'm like, yo, because somebody would ask, like, Cam, could you have played basketball? I could have. Now, fuck no. I wouldn't yeah. even, I remember having this conversation with uh, Steven Jackson. And 
the early part of my career, my rookie year for a couple months, Steven Jackson was with the Bobcats. Mm-hmm. And he was having a conversation. He was like, bro, you really think you could beat me in a game of one-on-one? I was like, hell yeah. This is a public apology <laughs> to Steven Jackson. Hell nah. Meet the wise me. Yeah. He would have been like, nah, bro. Because, bro, they know how to create their own shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, the skill. And it was he was making some tough-ass shots. And I'm like, bro, in an in a L.A. Fitness Equinox game, <laughs> That ain't being hit. Yeah, he was knocking them shits down, down with yeah. ease. Like, all he needed was a step back. Oh, body. Yeah. Ah, and one. Don't worry about it. Keep the change. Yeah. But I was like, damn. I was thoroughly impressed, but also reminded that, bruh, I ain't a hooper. But you're a competitor. I'm though. a competitor. That means I'm going to compete. <clears throat> yeah. And I'm like, ugh. But it's, it's one of them things <clears throat> that you just got to think about. And I'm telling you, like, a lot of people watch this show. And I'm going to tell y'all. For all y'all hoop dreamers out there that's analyzing the sixth man on your favorite basketball team or your favorite basketball player, he's a professional for a reason. Yeah. Keep your irrelevant ass comments to yourself because it's harder than you think. No rainbow. So, hold on. <laughs> I got a question. I just, I just got that. I almost went over. Yeah, yeah. I almost went okay. over my lid, but I caught it. Yeah. Oh. Do you think? So, so Cam, is it harder to for a basketball player to become a football player or a football player to become a basketball player? It's harder for a – no, we've seen it happen. It's harder for a football player to become a basketball player. Why so? Because the finesse in the game or – It's a different type of game that you don't acknowledge. <clears throat> it's a different type of stamina needed. And it's also a different type of physicality too. Because, mm-hmm. like, I know I was fouling. <laughs> Straight I up, five, like, I ain't gonna, ain't gonna cap. Like I know where, I was how I was playing. I knew I was fine. So you weren't the ones to be like, "That's me." That's me. Like, That's me. all me. I know because it's like, bro, my joints ain't built to stop and start and stop and start. <laughs> and when you playing these hezzy, oh, they going hezzy to hell. Like, like, they going. I'm like, bro, I'm not going for none of that. Brother, like you got a seizure. You got it. Like, real talk. Like, first off, for basketball players with a good defender, I'm not going nowhere, bro. Yeah. Like, you could do all this all you want. Half the time, the people who got the best hezzies yeah. can't shoot. Mm. Do your research. Now, there's only one. Kyrie. Oh, yeah. That mo- he got all the tools equipped to be. A legendary player. But once again, Kyrie is a professional. Yeah. Let us hoop dreamers. Keep dreaming. Keep the popcorn in our hand and, and, and just be like, dang, I wish I could do that. Because I can't do it. And I was reminded over the weekend that all basketball players ain't created equal. But that's the same way with football players, too. Yeah, like people, yeah. Because, I mean. Yeah. If DeMarcus Cousins came on that gridiron. Come on, now. Talk to him, DeMarcus. So, listen, Boogie. From one Boogie to another Boogie, I just keep it a big buck with you, bit, bro. <laughs> It'll be hell to pay. Yeah. Boy, you will be on some skizates. <laughs> but, you know, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to, you know, suppress his talent. You dig? But, you know, it is. But it was a definitely a fun event. Make sure you check out the content, Creators League. Uh, and see how your boy did. You know, I like, ain't no slouch now. And I'm going to compete, but that's about all you're going to get out of me. You did. Thanks. Here we go. Next clip. What we got? So we got a uh, meetup with the two greats from the WWE. Boy, John Cena. Is that Versace? <laughs> That shirt hard though. Yeah. So WrestleMania just went down. Uh, this I was past supposed week. to be there, bro. Yeah, they everybody. A lot of people came. Two chains. Uh, yeah. I know, like a lot of celebrities were just out there. Man, just for like a wrestling fan, seeing The Rock and John Cena go head to head. Yeah. Bro, that make a grown man. Can cry. we? Can we? Can we just marvel over? Like I came in. The era of being a wrestling fan when The Rock was at his prime. Yeah. John Cena, not so much. I had already matured. Okay. You know, but 
<laughs> I'm also reminded by John Cena's impact on the culture because he had everybody talking everybody, like, you can't, you can't see, see me. me. You dig what I'm saying? With the pump Reebok. Also, and reminded to the fact that juice or no juice, uh-huh. The dude got real headbands around his biceps. That is Them true. ain't wristbands. Ah. Them are headbands, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you knew that or not, but those are headbands. Now, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson. I think every athlete, hell, every movie star, hell, every entertainer wants to be like Dwayne Johnson. Mm-hmm. He just does shit his way. A uh, large stake owner in the UFL. Yeah, yeah. Also was a part of the XFL. He has his own everything. Yeah. And he's self-risen. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, is he a wrestler? Is he a movie star? Is he an entrepreneur? Is he a French he, toast maker? You know, French like, bro, them, them shit smack. Yeah. But damn, this dude is the <clears throat> ultimate hustler, the ultimate. Uh, he, and the thing that I admire the most is he's doing that shit his way he's like bro if i want to damn wrestle motherfucker, you can't tell me i can't wrestle yeah this, this shit a part of my journey you know what i'm saying that's kind of how i feel too it's like you can't tell me to fucking retire like motherfucker, football will always be a part of me you yeah, know what i'm saying you can't tell true. me i can't play football you can't tell me i can't own this you can't tell me i can't have a stake in it like bro i want to do whatever i want to do that's what being a boss is. And ain't nothing wrong with it. And ain't nothing wrong with it. It's about having the right opportunity to present and also seizing that moment. So seeing this happen, the John Cena versus the, the Rock, those things is something that is, that was a, that was an encore almost. Like mm-hmm. they paused a little bit. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, motherfucker, y'all know what it is. And for everybody to see them kind of go at it, it was one of them situations too that's like, mm. it's it's old meeting the new yeah. and a blast from the past from older fan. Like, yeah, bro, it was it was dope. Yeah, that was dope. Here we go, next clip. Destroying fractured his neck on this play. Damn. I seen it. <laughs> Never turn, Trent. Man, he laid the hit. Yeah. But his neck got split. Uh. I, I I seen this and I and I instantly reached out to him to see if he was okay. And I wasn't even going. I didn't know you guys had this clip up, but I'm gonna speak on it. And I told him this: Why the fuck, or who the fuck do you have to prove to, to feel like you have to make it to the NFL? I wanted to tell him like, I, I and I respect all. The content that he's been producing here lately, and it's been great content. It's been great insight. But the UFL really needs destroying. Mm. People follow destroying more than they follow the UFL. Okay. Right? And for those who haven't watched it, it's it's well produced. It's well edited, directed, all that. It's called Project NFL. Mm -hmm. This is my message to destroying. Bro. I know this was a, a unforeseen injury that mm-hmm. took place. Not only is it a reminder for you, but also a reminder for football players around the world to work on your technique and your fundamentals of tackling. Keep your head up because this is a <clears throat> serious. Yeah. This could have been paralyzing. Oh, but that just goes to my point when I was talking about like we need time or coaches need time to teach fundamentals of tackling. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, too, for destroying, I don't know if somebody's ever told you this, but from one football player who made it to the NFL to a, as they would say, in the most humbly respectful way, to a YouTuber, bro, you got way more clout, way more money than most NFL players. Yeah. So why the fuck do you need the validation to make it to the NFL. Because I'll tell you this, not a lot of people will admit that you're going to get institutionalized rather than keeping your ability to be unique, to be, you know, to show your art, to create certain things. That's not where the NFL is, bro. You're not gonna have that same freedom 
of filming on the on the field and filming inside the locker room and this, that, and the third. NFL because NFL gonna own that shit. They gonna own all that shit. Anything you shoot in the NFL state of Maryland. They gonna do the UFL will let you do it because yeah. it's good business for, for them. them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. not to slight who he is. My message for him is solely you don't have to prove nothing to nobody, bro. You are that guy. Yeah. You are that guy that guys want to be just like. Hell, I'm one of those guys that have mimicked what you've been able to do and said, damn, bro, like, let me not hate on it. Let me be a part of it. I went to his one-on-one -on -one events. Those yeah. shits are, are dope as fuck. That's a dope-ass experience. So much so that he's garnered attention from around the world. From the NFL. From the NFL. <laughs> where they said, hey, let's be a part of this shit too. And I'm saying to myself, like, damn, how can I create something like that? So yeah. I want to give you your flowers for that, but also get well soon. Also, bro, you don't need this shit. Yeah. But, but Cam, even though... You know, you went to the NFL, everything. When you on the field and you finally get that dream, right? The, mm -hmm. Like, Destroying has been in a situation where his dream got cut short because of his YouTube NCAA, career. Yeah, NCAA. Yeah. So, even when you, obviously, checks came in, cashed it, you on the field. But do you think about the money? You like, or oh, damn, bro, I finally did what I came out and I set out to do. But honestly, it didn't hit until I seen my last name on the jersey that's when you like that's when it, it, i did and it. it was online like like watching youtube and you see fanatics or these commercials mm -hmm. promoting your your stuff and it, it's like at the, at that time you're like yo look at my jersey and then yeah. like now me knowing her, like why the fuck I ain't getting paid for that? You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, like, you don't got whole, a new to it. Yeah. Your mind has blown. It's, it's, it's a whole thing when your when your mental is mature of of really what's going on, then that's when you start really paying attention to a lot of things. But I saw that and I wanted to reach out to him. But also the fact that we're talking about it now, I just wanted the world to know, like, bro. Don't let your ego get in the way of of protecting yourself and understand who you really are. Because like, you are the bad. Because you are. Like, people, or as we heard recently, you are an algorithm. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Algorithm meaning, hey, use my name, use my image to promote sales, yeah. to promote views. Me merely talking about this, now I could put destroying in my thumbnail. Yeah. You dig yeah. what I'm saying? But I think he might even open up and depending on how this season goes for him, he might open it up for other athletic creators like uh, Duke Dennis or uh, AJ Green to really try to compete at a UFL level too. Respectfully, uh, it's a whole nother level when you're playing professional. Then respectfully, though, it's a whole nother level when you're just a kicker too. That is true. Yeah, that is true. Come on, you're right? You're right. And let, let's 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 call a spade a spade. So. Oh, and he's out for the season with this, too. Mm. Yeah. So him being out will obviously require him to do some self-reflection. Yeah. Now, compare him to a Justin Tucker. You dig what I'm saying? Like, yes, yeah, going cool. back to what I was saying about DeMarcus Cousins. Like, bro, everything all cool <laughs> until you witness that shit firsthand and you realize, like, damn. Oh, he really good at basketball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. damn, these motherfuckers really are good. At what they do. That's right. why they are a professional. Not to shrink or suppress his ability. It's just like, yeah. yo, like these people are doing this shit in front of 30,000, 40,000. And even in the UFL, you like, we was, what were we talking about? Matt Corral was like, he got picked what, in the third round or he was like one of the top Bro, picks? I seen Matt Corral, uh, Corral, a person two years removed, really three to four years removed from being a second round pick. Potentially a franchise quarterback. Quarterback playing. And so the, you ain't playing against no. No, you ain't playing against couch. no slot. Like, I'm not saying that, but what I am saying in this situation, there's a lot of people who need this. Destroying ain't one of them people yeah, who needs it. He just fucking around. He just yeah. wanted to have a mark on his resume to say I played in the NFL. Correct. And it was it was going to be a value of anything. That's just him merely saying like, yo. Mama, I did it. Did yeah. I need it? No. But I did but it. But I did it just because like, yeah. whatever. I think his impact is creating and using the game of football in a different alternative way where I told him, I said, bro, you've been able to do something that the NFL has not been able to do. Give 
the forgotten, the overlooked, and the unathletic an opportunity to play the game of football mm. in one-on-ones. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Who's done that? So that's, that's what God has given you the platform to do. And it's dope as shit. You feel me? So I'll, to bring closer to this destroying, like I said, bro, get well soon. But you don't need this shit. No. If anything, the UFL needs destroying. I said it. Next clip. And Derrick Henry sat down with the pivot and uh, <laughs> had some words to say, a story about Saban. It's just like a, a funny story. I, I mean, we got we got plenty of stories. I, I, I'll tell you a funny one. One time we was in um we was in the meetings, you know, cause Saban he old school could stand if anybody scored and um and wanted to celebrate afterwards. So <laughs> we in the meeting one day after the game, forgot who we played, and he pulling up uh, he pulling up film. He's showing everybody. Then he he tell my aunt, you guys, you stop doing all that showboating, doing all that uh, praying hands and. Uh, act like you thanking God, and then later on that night, twelve o'clock, you down there, drink, got black and miles, got liquor, you chasing. He's like, he's like, well, oh, get all that. <laughs> we were crying. We couldn't do nothing but laugh because he was right. He's like, you do your prayer here, you get on one knee. Then twelve o'clock, twelve o'clock comes, you down there smoking black and miles on the corner, drinking, drinking liquor, smoking. <laughs> Jackson, Jackson girl, that shit, man, that, that shit was so funny, bro. I was like, bro, he, he was tired of y'all. Yeah, he was tired of us, bro. He was tired of us, bro. <laughs> you, you ever had a coach that was just real like that, though? Yeah, but you also know what you're recruiting now. That is true. Yeah, he chasing them liquor uh, drinkers and them black and mild <laughs> smokers. Them wild and them, wood them, them, smokers. Them, them, them girl chasers. Them motherfuckers is getting you these national championships. They're chasing them chips to them chips. You know chips. what I'm saying? So be mindful. I've always said this as a as a and key ingredient for a winning formula. Okay. You can't have too many gutter motherfuckers on your team because mm. your team ain't going to be disciplined. You can't have too many church boys on your team or nice guys mm -hmm. because your team going to be soft. Mm -hmm. You got to have a perfect blend of gutter motherfuckers uh -huh. and good guys that can coexist together. Mm. And gutter ain't a color. You're correct. Gutter can be black, white, green, blue, yellow, teal, shit. Comes in many different forms, shapes, and sizes and ethnicity. Ethnicities You're and, on down. and races. Yeah. So, and I also don't think a, a schoolboy or a good guy is one, one color. color yeah. You know what I'm saying? They come in all different sizes, big bro. Now, who did Cam used to run with on the team? Or oh, you was well versed? <laughs> Listen, I told you I was a CEO. I had to, I had to <laughs> dibble and dabble with you know with the with the pros, with the Joes, with the convicts, the Saints, <laughs> and the Sinners. Uh -huh. Everybody was welcome at, at, at Boogie Bill. <laughs> I ain't give a damn. Could you catch? Could you stop somebody? Was you a key asset to this team? Was you an asset or just overall an ass? Uh -huh. And that's all I gave a damn about. It. Yeah. I didn't give a damn if your damn nails was pink or yellow or black. Can you catch? And if you can, cool. Keep all that other shit to yourself. Here we go. Second down. Questionable call of the week. Let's see what we got. Gilbert Arenas is a generational hater. Let's see what he's talking about. Now, I do understand when they say this about Jokic. Jokic is probably statistically, when it comes to overall game, the worst MVP winner. He is the worst MVP winner in the last 40 years. Why you say that? When you're talking about MVP, the guys outside of first and second place, their teams was first and second place. The people who won the MVP, their teams was first and second. When so just with that, Jokic, he said he is, in the last 40 years, the worst MVP. Is he is some truth to it, or he's just trying to get clickbait? Dare I question <laughs> a former all-star mm -hmm. take on any matter. So okay. obviously there's some truth. Some to merit. It. Yes. Will people think that he's hating? They think I'm hating. Yeah. But I got some merit behind what I'm saying. Now, what I will say is this. 
I saw how Gilbert Arenas plays basketball. Uh I also see how Jokic plays basketball. They're two different type of players. Correct. Their style is different. So I can't sit up here and say, I'm not a fan of this person because I know how I play. And I've been guilty of measuring people's performance by how I play. And that's not fair to the person that you're critiquing. That's true. Right? And And they played in two different eras. They played in two different eras. So, yes, when you he does have merit when he says usually the MVP comes by way of a successful basketball team. Mm-hmm. They're one or two. This is not the case. So that's his point. That's what he's saying. I don't think he's per se speaking about his skill set and if he's good enough to win MVP. Obviously, like no, like he's won it before. Yeah. But what I will say is he's probably having a more microscopic view on this than people are giving him credit for. That's true. But he has every right to make the take. Like, yeah, for sure. And I'm not going to question that. So I'm like, yo, but I would ask him this. But why, though? Okay. Now, I will tell anybody who saw this clip to really watch the whole clip. Don't look at the the snippet clip. Mm-hmm. Watch the whole clip and then make your and, and uh, I think Paul Pierce said it best uh, to you this weekend. He said, when people tell the truth, they say they they uh, mix it up with hate or they think it's hate. It was a one line he said. He was like, when when the truth tells the truth, we're talking about himself, the mm. truth, people call it hate because mm. they can't handle the truth. And so that was that's a real thing because I think Gilbert Arenas is like a sh- straight shooter. Like, he ain't going to play with score. you. Yeah. But he going to shoot it to you straight. Like, no chaser. Like, I ain't going to BS with as, you. As that's how we should be. <clears throat> yeah. You know, everybody who I respected in my life was like that. Yeah. Don't don't serve this shit with honey, Put motherfucker. Put no sugar around the room. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. Like, bro, tell me how you really feel. Yeah. Because that's how I'm, I'm, I'm only going to be able to really process it in the right way. Yeah. So, real. here we go. Next clip. So, the Steelers and the Patriots gave away two that shit don't even look right numbers that shit don't even look right that would have sent a lot of people in uproar with tom brady's number being passed to antonio gibson we do know that's an april fool's that it was an april fool's yeah. joke because me being there knowing how much tom brady meant to the whole state of massachusetts mm-hmm. he was not or Antonio Gibson, whoever that may be, yeah. respectfully, that wasn't gonna be something. Boy, else he good. probably had his name tweeted and searched so yeah, much. Yeah, he went. He went. Yeah, with all type of threads. Why y'all gotta do Gibson? But like that? I, I knew I, this was from Robert Kraft's mouth himself, mm-hmm. saying that nobody will ever wear 12. the number twelve. Not as long as he's alive. Yeah. Not as long as he can help it. So shh. That right there, you a fool if you would have thought, like, a real April fool if you thought that that shit was for real. real. Yeah. Now, Antonio Brown, how much truth to this is, I could believe it. Well, yeah, they they gave, they're giving them Cordell. Cordell because, Brown. sadly to say, mm-hmm. I don't think he left on great terms. Mm-hmm. Had he left on great terms, maybe, maybe not. So if it was like a Ben Roethlisberger, you think? Yes. That? And if they would have won a Super Bowl with him being the guy there, then yes. But I think he they made won. That big catch. They but, won early, but yeah. they didn't win with him being the Antonio Brown that we knew no. him to grow into. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I so what saying. that's one of those situations. It's two different dynamics. Like Correct. Tom Brady, they may, like, he, if they want to say, we want to retire all number 12 jerseys around the league. Tom Brady has earned that right. Yeah. If we want to retire all 84, you don't even think about 84, respectfully, being Antonio Brown. When yeah. I think about 84, I think about Randy Moss. Are you 84? The fuck have you been? Why did I think 81? He was 81. But when I think 84? Uh-huh. And please don't edit this shit out. No, like, y'all, not, like y'all, know, Randy Moss wore eighty one in the Patriots and the Raiders. No, I don't. I think he wore eighteen with the Raiders. Yeah, he was eighty four. Yep, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. What are you talking about here? I'm tripping. Yeah, you, you are. Yeah, That's I'm why you sitting it. down. <laughs> shit. 
I'm tripping, tripping. Like, bro, I don't think about Antonio Brown. And that's my dog. Like, I respect Antonio Brown. I'm not trying to shun who and his impact but to the right. game. Moss. But when I think about 84, I think about Randy Moss. Yeah. Now, when I think about 84 on the Steelers, of course I think about Antonio, Antonio Brown. Brown. But how he left, it wasn't. What was that? That was the one. It was, was a little what? toxic. It was a little conduct detrimental. He didn't ride off in the sunset. Yeah, he he rode off in the storm. <laughs> rode off in the hearse. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, shit, it is what it is. So, yeah, man. next clip. You think, well, before we move on, you think one should be retired in Carolina? I don't. Look. It's been so much kind of side eye from both sides that I don't even know what they would do. Mm. Hopefully, my impact was felt where nobody would ever wear it. But uh, yeah, I, you know, it, I'll put it like this if Belichick was there still, I could see Antonio Gibson wearing the number 12. It just makes sense, right? Why do you say so? It's just a number to him, to Belichick. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Now, I give you one better. Another great coach, Nick Saban. Mm -hmm. People still wore number eight after Julio Jones. People wore, still wore number two after Derrick Henry. People still wore 22 after Mark Henry left. Uh, mm -hmm. Mark Ingram left. These are Heisman Trophy winners. And let's not forget, in recent years, within the last 10 years, this is the first time that we've seen – an Alabama player win the Heisman Trophy. Mm -hmm. Mark Ingram was the first Alabama football player to ever win the award. For however great Alabama has been, Mark, Mark Ingram was the first. And his number is still being worn to this day. But do you think it changes from college to the pros? Ain't nobody ever even thought about wearing number two at Auburn. <laughs> Makes sense to you? Shit, I don't remember nobody even wearing number eight in Louisville. Mm. You see what no. I mean? But do you think quarterbacks garner that type of attention that it's just like... Shit, now that I think about it, has anybody wore number seven in, in Virginia Tech? Shit, and if he did, motherfucker, that ain't your number. That's Vic number. But that's the thing That's the thing I'm trying to say. Like, with quarterbacks, y'all garner that attention that, boom, like, everything y'all do as quarterbacks, y'all probably the number one person being publicized on mm -hmm. the team. Y'all the face of most of the campaigns. Obviously, when y'all win or when you lose, you get the credit or you get the critique. So it's like, especially to be a great, especially in the NFL, it's just like, I think it garners that type of attention of like, damn, it's hard for somebody else to put that number on again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but in the NFL, it's a little different. You know what I'm saying? Because – you got to think about a lot of stuff. In college, it's just like a number, number that you yeah. got to you gotta create. Yeah. In the NFL, it's other decisions that goes into it. You like branding. Correct. You know, if I'm the type of player that had already wore a number, so if somebody got traded who normally would have wore number 12 or number 11 for Jules, like, yeah. it get a little questionable, you dig? But – that's college. That's an NFL. Yeah, so that's too different. It is what it is. Next clip. So we got Tony Brothers, man. He's a ref in the NBA, man. He a little ruthless out here, man. That, that ref a little wild. Let's check him out. I ain't gonna lie, one ref though. Smoke with the big ass eyebrows. Tony Brothers. Oh yeah. <laughs> he said with the eyebrows. Man, so he was trying to be cool. I don't like him either. I was a young and my mama we playing at the Pacers on the Hawks. My mama and my aunt Nisi was sitting courtside. You know they cheering. Every time I came in the game, whatever, I was young. I was probably my first, second year. Man, he, like, pulled me to the side. He was like, man, who the m I lost it. The oh, I, I went crazy. God. And he was, like, apologizing. I was like, that's my mama, you. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to start going crazy. And he, like, kept apologizing. Like, kept apologizing. Like, nah, nah, nah. But if you know him, he be trying to be, like, cool. Yeah. So, like, he be like, ah, oh, y'all motherfuckers ain't doing nothing tonight. Try to be that kind of person. And then he had turned into a <laughs> like in the middle of the game, like that's why I want to see people. So I called him a TikToker and he texted him. He'd do shit like that. You, he'd be trying to be cool with you. Be like, ah, look at that big booty girl over there. And then when you be like, I hey, call my, don't call me, a and you just like, like you know what I mean? Gonna... <laughs> so I'm like, I don't, I don't find him either. He, that's crazy, bro. He was a weirdo. When he said that, I went so crazy, bro. I was like, I slapped it. I said that I would slap the shit out you, bro. And I told him, I got a locker room. Like, like, report it to the league. Report it to the league. You know, take him. Report it to the league. Report it to the league. 
T going in on him, bro. On both sides. Okay, yeah. Okay. From Jeff T's perspective, I can see where he was coming from. Correct. Not knowing the circumstances of or the relationship of that. But he must admit that was an innocent call out. Yeah. Because we like all have been mama. guilty. Like, look, bro, let's keep it a buck. By even saying, damn, that bitch got a fat ass. Or damn, that motherfucker. But that's my sister, bro. Oh, shit, oh, for shit, real? Bro, damn, damn my, my, fault. Fault. my apologies. My apologies, bro. I ain't mean no difference. Because if it wasn't no relations, then you would have just been like, oh, I, oh okay. Yeah. Then was, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a little contradicting, but. Because yeah. cause a lot of people meet, and this, this is going to be wild. I seen this post. It was like, bro, you ever met, I ever met, you ever met a dude by looking at ass? No, and you ever became best friends, friends yeah. by watching the ass. Yes, yeah. And that was uh, Dion Cole. That yeah, was exactly. in his, yeah, that was in his, uh, Dion Cole. Because yeah, he was watching the ass, you look back at somebody, and you're and like, then, yeah. That shit, man. Yeah, yeah, but shit. You be like, man, that bitch got a fab one, don't she? But then you be like, bro, that's my motherfucking cousin, that's my little sister. Oh, oh. my bad. But it ain't no it, it, it's it's you gotta you gotta know the context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Tony Brothers didn't necessarily his antennas weren't right up. Now, they yeah. were bent, but they weren't up. Yeah. Uh, he should have just been like, bro, you know them? Do you know them? And then followed right. it up with right. what he said. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Oh. If you didn't know. You know what I mean? Oh, but you like, but I can see where, where he coming from. You did? Here we go. Next clip, man. Well, we talking about a little spat. And we talking about Skip Bayless, man, going back and forth with you. Let's see what he's talking about. Dear Cameron Newton. I do believe I can beat you. Ah. No joke. No laugh until you cry. I do. But you are right about this. That was just me and my wife, Ernestine, in that little gymnasium. There was not a hundred million people watching you lose a Super okay, Bowl pause it right on there. television. Another hundred thousand. Pause it right there. Yeah. All right, Skip. You start it, I'm about to finish it. Oh. Skip Bayless needs Cameron Newton. Think about it. I seen a report that said that Skip Bayless's ratings has failed drastically week after week after week after week. Mm -hmm. Now, Peggy, mm -hmm. I ask you the question. Who can give Skip Bayless them ratings sitting across from him on that desk? Yeah, you're going to give him the ratings. You're going to boost him up. This is not to shun Richard Sherman, mm -hmm. Keyshawn Johnson, or anybody else this that's a part of that undisputed. This ain't, this ain't about y'all. This is about Skip Bayless and understanding the tactics that he's trying to go about. He falling and he can't get up. He's trying to play me in an irrelevant basketball game where it initially started with me going back and saying, hey, Skip, if you can't do it, shut up. Mm -hmm. True shit. That's facts. And he can't do it. Somehow or another, we done got into a week after week, week after week, week after week. He's saying something. I said that I'll play him, but then I had to realize and say, Skip don't really want to play me. Skip mm -hmm. just want ratings from a failing show. He don't want to play you. He's trying to play you. He, that's what he's like, That's what he's trying to do. Yeah. He's mentioning the Super Bowl. He's mentioning Von Miller. He's mentioning these different things about – previous coaches having input. That's not what he's trying to stay relevant, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. This ain't about basketball, Skip. Mm. Skip needs book. Skip needs book. And we have a clip here. Skip Bayless' Undisputed Show is currently averaging the smallest audience since it returned from hiatus last September, per Sports Media Watch. Don't get mad at me, Skip. Get mad at Sports Media Watch <laughs> yeah. for reporting this. The show averaged fewer than 50,000 viewers leading into the NCAA Sweet 16. Uh, Peggy, we averaged that, and I am the only sole proprietor uh -huh. of 4th and 1 and Funky Friday. Mm -hmm. So this ain't with Fox. This ain't with Viacom. This ain't with Disney. This ain't with ESPN. This is just me saying, hey, go watch my show. And yeah, he got a whole machine. And you him. got a whole gallon of gasoline <laughs> to pour on your little flicker, and you can't boost no ratings or no numbers. 
That's sad, Skip. So, on, if you really on. want me to become a part of your show to boost your ratings, call my agent. Mm. But, nine times out of ten, I don't know what I would say. Okay. But, if Skip wants to have a debate, mm. like, we're used to Skip debating. I loved when Skip and Stephen A. was there. Yeah, me too. It split for God knows what reason. I love to see Skip and Shannon. Mm. It split for God knows whatever reason. <laughs> now he need another Now one. you need another dude. <laughs> Let's admit it, Skip. Come on, Skip. You ain't you ain't hitting on what you used to hit on now. All right. <laughs> no rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully though. They ain't come to see you on this. Like, come on. You you realizing that shit. You ain't David Ruffin that you thought you <laughs> was. was. You was just a backup singer. <laughs> and you need a real David Ruffin. Come on now. To carry the group. Come on, Temptation. Like, you blue. <laughs> you blue. That's how you are. I'm trying to tell you, Skip. I got sunshine, god damn it. <laughs> On a cloudy day. Now that must have remind you that's where you trying to go with it. Yeah. Undisputed is failing in ratings. Mm. So you try to use Cam Newton's name to drive relevancy. Damn, Skipper Roo. He better than that. He better than that. So, uh, and I don't know, Skip, if I would do that, cause I love smoking my little cigar and talking to Peggy, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. speaking freely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if y'all gonna allow me to do that on Undisputed. Mm -mm. Because fourth and one is uncut. Uncut and raw. Yeah. Like the, the natural resource that Medellin produce. <laughs> uncut, untethered, <laughs> unscratched. Get the hell out of All here. that. Look, bro, the truth of the matter is this. Skip, we've moved the goalposts so much when we were supposed to just initially play a game of horse or a three-point contest. Mm-hmm. I've wondered and scratched my head. I'm like, yo, Skip Bayless really want to play me? Yeah. Then it went from playing basketball to I'll run however far in the contest to after we play. How long, you name it, how long would you want to run? Motherfucker, I'm going to run 10 yards. You ain't faster than me. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I'm not going to run a fucking mile to, to, to bullshit with you. I'm going to remind you why I'm an athlete and you're a reporter. Damn, and you're bro. a journalist. Why you got to do him like that? You're going to have him apologizing like J. Cole did Kendrick. Man, listen. Wait, so I said, bro, Skip really want to play me. He done must have bumped his head and, 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 and caught some type of amnesia because he must have forgot. Who you were. Like, bro, I'm an athlete. And, the, and that's with an F. The F is for fucking. <laughs> I'm a fucking athlete. Like, what the fuck? Is you, you think I'm going to let you beat me, Skip? You can't beat me in nothing. Outside of a subjective debate. And that's it. Third down. Players fashion, or as we would like to call it, boogie approved. Let's see what we got. Well, Nike just unveiled uh, Wimby's new logo and got the streets talking like it might be the best logo that they ever made. So, yeah, man, they done stacked his logo up against Kobe's, LeBron, Jordan. I thought that was slick, like. Men in Black type. Spider-Man, Men in Black, Deadpool. Mm -hmm. But that shit fire. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, does he own <clears throat> the logo? I don't know. They call him the alien, but I don't think he owned the logo. Help him out, 
I don't know. Help him out, but get him on his business, people, man, boo. People don't think about that. You gotta own yeah. your logo. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That, that's interesting. No people, people don't. A lot think of people about that. don't own their logos. So you must understand for any upcoming athlete that's thinking about branding, mm-hmm. you must own your logos because if you were to go anywhere else, could you take that alien and slap it on something? Whatever. But I don't even know what the Nike logo is on. I don't know. It that's was the cool. Nike. It was on the side. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cool. With the Nikes, I I doubt that you could just. Who knows? What do you like when? But when, as a player that had a signature shoe, mm-hmm. when they creating this logo, like how does that process work? It's different, and I I wanted to be more involved in my signature shoe than I was. Okay. Because I I didn't feel I felt twenty percent involved. Because your cleats, bro. Had the shit by storm. It was sold up. Like yeah, I mean, it, the cleats. But I think football players get a um, an unrealistic kind of expectation because you're going against an unmasked athlete mm-hmm. with basketball players. Your face Correct. is seen more on the court than a football player's face is seen on the football field. Because you had a cross trainers too. Because you have a helmet on. Mm-hmm. So people aren't, they can't tie one to the other. Nor when you're, when you're wearing a cross trainer, you can't wear that cross trainer on the field. That's true. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's what makes it so, that's, those are the challenges for why training and football players in branding is, is, is tough. Yeah. So that's not this circumstance here. Here we go, next clip. So they say they might have got, uh, they say D-Book, that might be him going from ball to a hairstyle. Let's see what they're talking about. Here we go. Ooh. Uh, man, so look. Then it. everybody was saying it's, it's Devin Booker. Bro. He was like, bro, y'all got me messed up. Bro. I love it. Because if our beautiful piece? queens oh. can walk around with synthetic in their hair, why can't the kings walk around with synthetic in ours? So is them some uh, extensions you got? <laughs> My machine don't fall, baby. <laughs> you will never know. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this. Bro, I'm organic. Okay, there's genetics. You yeah, got in there. Listen, bro. I eat clean. As, you know what I mean? It's a part of the diet, and it's also a part of your... Your bloodline yeah. and tight. Yeah, we don't got no uh, no scallywags in my family. Okay. Meaning no bald heads. I can't say the same about everybody that's on this show now. Everybody want to hate, haters going to hate, you know let, what I'm saying? Uh, I'll play a game. You everybody like, take their hat off on the counter. I'm going to keep, keep my, you know what I'm saying? I'll take it off and put it back on. All right, player. But it is, it is, man. <laughs> Look, that, hey, stay woke, queens. I don't think it, I mean, yeah, like, the way I'll be, one day you got the low blow and then you got the Rapunzel the next day. Hey. Hey. But, bro, do you, dog? Yeah, if that's what you need. You know what I'm saying? If that's going to boost your confidence, if you, I, if, you, if you got the George Jefferson on Tuesday and then you got the, the Ben Wallace today, you got, you got the George Jefferson <laughs> one day and then the Ben Wallace the next day, bro. And you have enough to brush. It now you got matter. enough to pick. You, you know what I mean? You got Steve Harvey the next. It's all right, bro. Cool. Man, if it's my time, when it's my time. I'm telling you. I'm about to go that Michael Jordan route. Just baby. don't make me mad or be around me. And I know that that's a toupee up there. Because hey. I'm going a, I'm to a rip it off. No, you oh. will be the type. Shut up. Man, I paid good money for this <laughs> shit. <laughs> Talk about. But I don't hate, dog. You know what I mean? Sometimes we all need a little boost. And confidence, and whatever you get to boost your confidence, I don't knock it. Mm-hmm. I'm with it. Next clip. Man, we got Louis Vuitton done. She got a little bit of everything on, not just Louis. She got some Gucci. Uh, but, Peru. But she 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 had to put some fits together, some real ensembles. This yeah. Year. Man, that's that 38 and 0 undefeated type Man, I swag. I do whatever I want to, and I wish you would mm. say something. Yeah. When you winning, she winning in style come too. Come on, yeah. in good style, like that. That right down, like ooh, yeah, sir, <laughs> auntie. She getting it. Yeah, you she feel me? Have you ever had a coach, like in your years of playing, that you like, damn, coach, 
He kind of putting it on. And it might be different from basketball. Obviously, you inside football, it's outside. I seen Coach Ron Rivera pick up his thieves. For real? Since I, when I first, you know, man, he wasn't really, nah. Over the years, he started wearing a little Louis Vuitton. He started looking at bug. He like, man, shit, hello. But yeah, you got, you got, man. Look, you got to get bit by the bug. Okay. Oh, the, bit by the what? Bug. Okay. That's B double O G. Okay. Not B U G. Okay. And when you when you around me enough, you gonna realize like, bro, you gotta put it on every day. Uh huh. Not some Sometimes. days. Okay. This is every day. Every day. Shit, know what I mean? And twice on Sunday, cause <laughs> you know I'm a step. Okay. But I ain't, I ain't pledged. <laughs> I did pledge to myself. Me, five, me. Man, you, you got to shout out to them alphas. That's what the pledging okay. about. I know you pledged too, Peggy, a.k.a. Yeah. Stand All right. All right. <laughs> Delta I'm Sigma a, Theta. I'm about to stump you out. Now. Yeah, cool. That cool. Shout out to all my kings and queens that has pledged. You know, yeah. I would have thought you was a kappa. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. yeah I got cool. your cap all right. That's cool. Bust a cap. That's cool. <laughs> cool. Shout out to everybody who done pledged, and shout out to the people who didn't pledge either. It is what it is. Here we go, fourth down. Fan question of the week. What we got, Peg? Man, we got a few different fan questions this week, man. We opened it up at Arizona. First up, we got none other than Boogie Cousins, DeMarcus mm. Cousins. Man, I'm out here watching Cam move right now, bro. You know, I just seen the hat fall off. So, so my question is, Cam, the top one you got, how much does that fall off? She hit the ground, you can hear it echo through all <laughs> I feel like bro walking around with a permanent helmet on, bro. Like, I really just want to know how much the hat weighs, bro. Like, for real. Damn. So, Boogie, how much does the Mashika hat weigh, man? It's the quality, Peg. Yeah, this ain't on. no. You can't skip this. Listen, bro. Every hat is handcrafted okay. by a certified Milner hat maker. Mm. Come on, now. We ain't. This ain't. We running good business. This is good quality felt here. Come on, now. You know what I'm saying? Just don't tell Peter. <laughs> don't tell Peter. You know what I mean? But like, he said you had the helmet at Rydell on, but you had that Mashika. Right. You know, it was a Mashika. But that's quality, though, because if it was a cheap head, you wouldn't hear it. Ah. Uh. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Uh, you that, know what I'm saying? Quality, that quality. That quality. We here. Yeah. I don't know how much it weighs, but I know the quality there. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Next question. RDC, where I had a few questions uh, about you and passing the rock. So they say you was being stingy with the rock during the celebrity game during the Super Bowl. Okay. They say Mark Phillips. Caught the ball when you passed it to him one time, but you didn't keep going back into the well. And they're trying to figure out why you ain't passed the ball back to Mark. It was getting real competitive, and I was trying to win. So Mark wasn't it. Mark was a part of the pregame, early game package. And as the game started getting serious, Mark, my boy. <laughs> Mark your spot and stand to the side. Listen, stick to creating the content, <laughs> big bro. He gonna respond to this. That is fine. <laughs> and I'm expecting him to, but if you my boy, I gotta keep it a buck. The separation one there, man. Yeah, and, you ain't I, seen, open. I seen your leg composition and your your, your 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 ankle. It was like, man, he he can't stick and stay like, you know what I mean? Then on defense, he can the house. Yeah. So if Mark Mark was one of them people that like they're yeah. ball, you put in, get the minutes. Yeah, get him in early. All right, get him in. Until the game yeah. start getting serious. All right, like, come All on right. out. Hey, come on. Come, come on, on, Mark. Right here. Come on, bro. Right sorry, me, sorry. Good shit, bro. Good, good shit. shit. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. Shit. yeah. 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 I want to get some Gatorade. Just relax. You're good. You're done. But it's all right. You're done. <laughs> But uh, yeah, man, the game got real serious and competitive, and, yeah. and, and them girls started coming out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, you put some alpha males or you put some guys around some girls. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Start th <laughs> You know what I mean? You know, you doing all the tricks with the ball and the football, and you oh, trying to show okay. your arm off, and that's what happened. Here we go. Next question. Swagner 007 said, "Would you ever do a celebrity boxing match? And if you did." Who would your top opponent pick be? I gained nothing by boxing, mm. so I, I wouldn't. You want to do the boxing? Yeah. What other celebrity sport other than basketball would you try to play? Tennis. 
Mm. I do a celebrity tennis. Okay. Nothing, nothing physical that's gonna that's gonna harm about yeah harm my image. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, you gotta keep the face. And even and even with basketball, you fuck around and get embarrassed. Like, oh, hold on. You know what I mean? Watch the ankles. But uh, boxing or MMA? Nah, you take your whole manhood just off of one event, and you better not. You better, you better shut the fuck up before we go get so and so. Nah, y'all ain't gonna put me. But we gonna get Devo. I don't, I don't even like playing like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't play. I don't, yeah. You know, like I don't. I don't even play fight. I don't know how to play fight. Yeah. You have, you have, you have a slap box growing up. Yeah, and it, 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 it turned into serious. a real fight. <laughs> bro, that bro, that'd be the worst. You be like boom. Ah, right, y'all hit too hard. Yeah, yeah. And that hand started closing up like this. A tap turned into a fat. Oh, Ooh. shit. Step back. All right, pull the bass up. All right. All right, All right. All right. now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you gonna, Rock look, your I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to play. And I, and I believe in sportsmanship. So, yeah. like, I'm from fight to the end. Yeah. If ain't nobody breaking it up, bro. bruh. Nah, so. You know what? Let me stop yeah. talking like that because it's <laughs> triggering me. I'm a lover, and that's the old me. So who in tennis, if you had to pick a time, like somebody to go against? Do you know Ocho. Oh. Hey, Ocho not seeing me. I played Ocho or I, I, who, I, who I seen play. Oh, DJ Mustard. DJ, DJ Mustard? DJ Mustard claims that he played tennis. But I'm a year in. Okay. Bro, I don't want to play uh, uh, racquetball. Yeah. Nah, I want to play Tennis. tennis. I want to get you, you know. So you calling Ocho out? I been called Ocho out. Did y'all ever meet up and play? Man, Ocho did not bring his tennis racket when he so came. So he to was Atlanta. ducking smoke. Man, man, look. He ducking smoke. Ocho. Come on. Dude. I know you're out there. Yeah. I know you're there. I know you're there. Come on now. Pick up your racket, brother. You feel me? Come man, on yeah, now. Yeah, I really, I really enjoy tennis. Okay. And uh, as my daughter is 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 getting into the game. That's something that I also want to expand my, my skill set with doing too. So, all right. Here we Ro go. Next question. Rodessa. Rodessa? Rodessa. Mm -hmm. Should I had a grandma named Odessa? Rodessa Allen says, Good morning. Question On the first date, is $50 enough to pay? If the woman has gotten beautiful and she was expecting a better place to eat, she don't approve. Is she high maintenance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A good first date shouldn't be predicated off of how much you spend. What is it predicated off of? It's the experience. Mm. Love Dr. Bull once again. Come you know on, you broke man. down. Pull up a seat. You broke man. down Kevin Durant last week. Right. This week listen, you're breaking down Rodessa listen, Allen. Fifty dollars enough to pay. Listen. So we tapping in. The uh, hotlines uh, coming uh, live. A dating experience should not be predicated off of the amount of money that was spent. Okay. It's the effort. Mm -hmm. It's the. It's the. What do you leave? What's the takeaway from it? He tried. Okay. Given the circumstances, he made the most or she made the most. Because I am I come from the cloth. Like, my girl bagged me because she took me on a date. Mm. Fuck me up when she said, don't worry about it. I just need you available. I'm sending you everything. Mm. You ain't, I ain't never, ever, ever had that before. Ever. Shot man, listen here. That's what she done, she done did. Boy, it. look, bro. For Valentine's Day, uh -huh. put all y'all chicks on game, bro. Okay. For Valentine's Day, she sent me everything. She was like, as long as your, is, I don't know what your schedule is, just make sure your schedule is free, and I'm sending you all the information. Bro, we went to a city that none of us knew anything about. Yeah. She got a chef. Not only did that, she got an Airbnb, and she, like, decked out the whole thing and, like, things that was – Synonymous to our relationship. She had pictures. It was thoughtful. She had words. I was like, what the fuck? Damn. Damn. Pro I don't know what she spent. It yeah. didn't matter what she spent. The effort it was thought. there. It's like, bro, the balloons had like certain words that we would say. We had we got a lot of inside jokes. Yeah. She's a comedian. She's an actress. So all the things that we just snicker about, you know, mm. was on those strings. And I was just like, damn, like. That's where girls and guys are too completely. I would have never yeah, even thought, thought about that. to do these things. So I'm watching. I'm eating purse. my food, and I'm saying like, you know, what I'm saying, "Hey, you talking about on like?" <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was just a joke that we had, uh, or it was like, "Do it." Yeah. <laughs> it's a Florida thing. Like y'all yeah. got Sarat, do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's what's up, though. But that 
to anybody who's in search of somebody or you ain't got to be in search. It's like, bro, that should not be the determining factor because you, everybody's allowance is different. Yeah, that's true. So on that first date, man, if you, if you can, I feel like if you walk away from it, no matter the money saying like, damn, I'll do this again. Yeah. Or this was like something I'm feeling or somebody I'm feeling. I think that's the first date. Like, I don't like, I think that's a good first date. No, we have to do away with the superficialness in regards to dating. Yeah. Like, where he gonna get me? Where he gonna you know buy? I mean? which, yeah. And the entitlement, entitlement. is oh killing us because who, who says the guy has to always pay first? Mm. Because my, my question to this, and this may rub people the wrong way. Well, you asked me out on a date. Well, my question is, would you ever ask a guy out? No, because I allow a man to be a man. Which I also just seen. Allowing a man to lead and not listening is crazy too. So. That is true. Boy. Like, come I on. I can't son. lead if you don't listen. Like, what? <laughs> come but on. I got to be speaking you the right stuff to listen to. But if I'm speaking you the right stuff to listen that, to. I understand that, but it's so. It's, it's a, it worked hand in hand. Hand in hand. Hand in hand. Hand in hand. But the superficialness in regards to a relationship, that's. That's a disaster that's waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. And also, don't overshoot your expectations, gentlemen. Yeah. Knowing that you done went in the red to make a purchase, now that person who you made that purchase for is expecting that, that and more the and next more. time. Yeah. yeah. But keep it simple with me. If you give me my favorite candy, give me my favorite food. Like, cause I ain't the I ain't the guy now. Somebody will say, Cam, you got a lot. Yes, I do. So that even makes it harder for somebody to try to get me a it's gift. On you, yeah. But that's not the point. The point is what went into it. I like letters. I like I like small things that mm. went into the things that you can't buy, Pig. Yeah. That's what I enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. What I'm I can get everything else, baby. You feel me? I just need right you to then. listen to me as I'm trying to lead us through this wilderness <laughs> that they call life. Oh. Uh, okay. Just stand by me. <laughs> and darling, darling. Come on, man. By me. Oh, stay by me. Oh. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Here we go. Newton's Law. What are we titling this, Peggy? Man, the massive month for women's basketball. Man, women are on top. Yeah. In the basketball arena. Yeah. Man, what we have here is uh, the Iowa First South Carolina National Championship game has garnered over 18.7 million views and viewers, which is bigger uh, and, and more viewers, bigger and more viewers than uh, Thursday Night Football on Amazon, which was 11 million views. Then you also have the 2023 NBA Finals, which garnered 11.64 million views. And what we have here is a women's college basketball game obliterated all of that. So, Cam, the question is, and, and I'm going to let you break it down, is like, break down, obviously, we have some key pieces of people that, that made this happen. Yeah. Um, and, and how did this even come about in your eyes? Look, now, I, I, I caution, I caution what I'm about to say to be the truth that I know the truth to be. Okay. And only the truth. For the longest, women's sports have been safe. I said, mm. this is the first time where we've identified a villain, or in this case, we have identified a rivalry. Think about it. Okay. For the longest, we have never villainized a woman. And, and none of the major sports from women, we have never villainized a woman. And you, and you say track, mm -hmm. Shakari Richardson. Mm-hmm. But you see what those numbers, I would, be, I would love to see what those numbers look like. Yeah. Because we're not used to holding a female to that standard like, I don't like her. Yeah. And yeah. I want to see her lose. Yeah. But for LSU, yeah. they wanted to see them lose. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so when I think about Felage Johnson and what Angel Reese was able to do at LSU, Caitlin Clark. Mm hmm needs to thank them for giving her that platform to perform and to bring attention and eyes to that event. Yeah. It's sad, 
but it's the truth. Because that was, to me, I feel like that was just as important than the national championship. Oh, for sure. And it was up. because of all the flack that was, or all the attention that was garnered for when she did like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. When she said, oh, we national championship. Yeah. Like, we, like, that, they wasn't used to sisters popping oh, off, like, popping shit. like, you know yeah, what I'm saying, like, or talking like guys normally talk. Yeah, correct. Like, get that shit out of it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, shut that shit up. And I hated it because it's like, oh, conduct yourself as a lady. But it's like, bro, we gladiator. When you a gladiator, bro, you that gotta, ain't no gender. Correct. That ain't no race. That's no creed. When we step into these lines, they showed up this year as gladiators. For sure. And we're not used to seeing females like that. Yeah. So shout out to Paige, Angel, Cameron, Caitlin, Camilla, amongst other female athletes mm -hmm. that did their part in highlighting the greatness of the woman mm -hmm. this year in sports. Yeah. I can't tell you the last time, and the real question is, when was the last time you watched or cared to watch a female basketball game yeah. before this year? And the thing is, this year, I was like, bro, I got to get home and watch the women's game. And like, oh, the men's game playing? No, oh, I, I wanted to watch the, the women's, women's game. game. Yeah, it and was it, just. So go back. And I'm yeah. not trying to create nothing other than an understanding of where my, where my take comes from. Mm -hmm. They crucified Angel. Yeah, they did. For being authentically herself. They, they crucified the whole LSU team. Oh, mm -hmm. that's classless. That's tasteless. They have to show sportsmanship. But they don't understand you have to respect where a person is from. You can't just say, oh, no, nah, that's tasteless, that's classless, that's, that's not a good notion for the sport. But it is, though. Yeah. And when you think of an Angel Reese, when you think of, you know, even Caitlin Clark, they appease to what they – they are a product of their environment. Mm -hmm. Man, I tip my head off to every single female athlete that played a part in that because it just wasn't one event that led to that mm -hmm. and not to suppress what Caitlin Clark was able to do not only this year but throughout her whole college career it was something that will always garner the attention for ever knowing that people are watching this game solely to see what Caitlin Clark is going to do yeah the rematch yeah and also can Caitlin beat Goliath in South Carolina? These things, people this want storylines. Story yep. And in order to have a storyline, a healthy one, you need a villain. Mm. You need a hero. Yeah. And we're not used to female sports having that. Yeah. Because it's always respectful and it's always, you know, looked at in a certain manner, but not this year. Before Magic Johnson, before Larry Bird, mm -hmm. before Michael Jordan, before the, the, the bad boys and the Pistons, and nobody really wasn't giving it back when Bill Russell was around. Yeah, and the Will Chamberlain, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you need that. Rivalry in media equates to ratings. Mm-hmm. They need somebody they to point need, the finger I'm at. I'm trying to at. tell you, like, listen to what, like. But you even see it right now, even in college basketball, with Duke and Carolina. Yeah. It's always, oh, that's a bloodbath. Like, they going to go at each other. And right. no matter if the teams are trash. Yeah. If they have a sorry season, people going to tune into that game because the rivalry. And I think they started that. This Before year. this year, and especially college female sports. Mm hmm there wasn't a real rivalry no. that garnered the attention no. that we're used to seeing in men's sports. Correct. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And Don Staley, obviously she just made a post that she's going to give her practice squad rings too. That's hard. And her practice squad are all guys. Arena, they've opened up the building and open practice before the women's basketball team gets ready to open up their season in Paris. They leave tomorrow. And in the meantime, they've allowed us to come and infiltrate their court. Deb Antonelli, L. Duncan standing here with Coach Staley. Coach, um, I'm just going to, I'll be the ignorant one. I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Who are these dudes? <laughs> these, dudes these dudes are the highlighters. Okay. They're, they're the highlighters because they actually are the, the main reason 
why we are as successful as we That's are. That's facts. They're students. They're male practice players. They come here. They're committed. We win championships. They get rings. Like, several of them have gotten a national championship ring from 2022. Wow. So anytime we win, they win. Because their dedication is and sacrifice is just as much. The Don has spoken. Yeah. Because it's 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 one of those things that if we're if we want these things to keep pushing the pendulum to equality, we must now we gotta support each other. We gotta support each other. Yeah. And but to my to our point of Newton's law being why, you know, the massive growth for women's sports is come by way of the sports world acknowledging a villain. Yeah. It's sad to admit, but like I said, rivalries equate to ratings. And I think also, too, even from the men's perspective, us looking at the game and respecting it for what it is. Yeah. And not, oh, that's just a girl's game. No, nah, it's basketball. I'm yeah, watching yeah. a basketball game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think I even caught myself this year. I was just like, oh, I'm about to go watch the game. It used to be like, oh, that's the women's game. Or yeah. Da, da, da. But now it's like, no, that's the game. That's but the now, game like, I re bro, this, no, no, no lie. I was watching the UConn game and UConn and Iowa. Mm -hmm. And I was just marveling over, um, you know, Paige and Caitlin kind of go back and forth, back Correct. and forth. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, I'm like, Bro, she cold. Yeah. I don't, like, yeah, they yeah. ain't no... It, it ain't, ain't no, for no girl. If she you know cold for a girl, she's It's just like, cold. yo, she cold. Yeah. Like, real shit. Like, she pulling up from the logo. She pulling up anywhere. And she going behind the yeah. back and just, you know... And that's why I say, like, whatever her environment was that created who she is, mm -hmm. it, should, it should be supported. No different than Angel Reese. It, two different circumstances. Falah J. Johnson, these people don't come from the same background, so you can't attack their background as something to say, like, that's tasteless, that's classless. Because they are who they are because of something, and that something may be a, a any type of noun, mm -hmm. a person, place, or a thing. Yeah. And you have to respect that for what it is and not shade that. Correct. And just respect, like, even though I don't know where Caitlin is from, mm -hmm. I don't never been to Iowa. Yeah. But that doesn't mean the way she plays the game, I have to critique it in a negative manner. Because even with her story, she, like, when it came out, she was like, I always wanted to go to UConn. I used to be a UConn fan growing up. And he never, the coach at UConn never came to my practice. They never recruited me. Mm. And so that was her fire when mm. he played. You, you know what I'm saying? It's still a story. Yeah. But question. To Cam, so do you think this women's basketball is a moment or it's a movement? Do you think it's going to still keep growing after this year? Oh, it's definitely a movement. All right. But I think with what we've seen, the rise in the ratings, mm -hmm. so to speak, you can't deny the ingredients or the algorithm that led to that. Yeah. And that will promote more authenticity for women. So for the – the Flo, uh, the Flo Joes and Venus Williams of the world, the Shikari Richardsons of the world, yeah. the Cheryl Swoops of the world. These great women and the women that I haven't named, that doesn't mean that they're not great. They had their own distinct style. Correct. You know what I'm saying? That brought a different element than the, than the normalcy than we're used to seeing in women's sports. And do you think, you think that that's going to translate to the WNBA? When no, and Angel Reese and Caitlin go, do you think the ratings, the numbers, like, you it think should. they can bring that? It I should. I hope so, yeah. I, you know, because I would love, I remember DMing um, Angel. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I was like, yo, man, keep your head up because you give hope for my daughter. Mm. My daughters. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So don't, don't feel suppressed. Heavy is the crown. True. You dig what I'm saying? Even for Caitlyn, that's not to say like she ain't shit or shit. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, bro, everybody has a movement in their own right. And it's created because you are authentically who you are. Yeah. And you walking in your purpose. Being your own self is here to stay. And I hope more women take that same uh, blueprint and apply it to them to them and being grateful for what it is, man. I love it. Yeah. That's, That's all we got, Pig.
Catch me each and every week on all my platforms. And uh, make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you comment. But most of all, make sure you subscribe. Mm -hmm. From the beautiful team over here at Iconic Saga, I cannot leave without telling you guys to become a member today. How do you become a member today? Make sure you go to IconicSaga.com where we have giveaways. We have exclusive content amongst other things that we do. Make sure you go to IconicSaga.com and it's just a dollar for ad-free content, exclusive content. Mm. With that being said, Pig. What you giving away then, boo? With that being said, What Pig, you giving away? I am going to give away my creative, creator league mm. jersey. Game one. Game one. Sweat still in there. It smell like it, boy. You dig what I'm saying? And you know it's real when the tape's still on it. I had to Ooh. tape out the, the irrelevant number. And only you would know what that number is. And just so you know that it is authenticated, I have to sign it. Mm. You did. All for a dollar? All for a dollar. Mm. The amount of money is this jersey number. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? So how do you put your name in a hat to potentially win this Creator League's jersey? Sign up today at IconicSaga.com. And with love, ladies and gentlemen, as I always say, one finger, one pinky, one thumb, all together, one, one love. love. You dig!